Jastro, uh, if I may come in a moment, uh, the uh, uh, Lovell reported very new bright impact craters and also said again at another point, uh, a lot of new craters uh, with white uh, uh, debris around them. What does that indicate to you? Uh, th that uh, his eyes detected uh, some features which have probably not shown up, or at least I haven't heard commented on, in the discussion of the lunar orbiter photographs. Was he uh, suggesting that these are new craters in the sense that they have recently been formed, or new because they have not been discovered yet? Uh, both, I suspect. They are new in the, in the same sense that the Arizona meteorite crater is new. Namely, uh, that crater is about 30,000 years old. They're, they're relatively new in the history of the moon, but they're not new in the sense of uh, this year or last year. All this talk about uh, lunar craters and, of course, what causes them, the meteorite. Uh, may I show a photograph, yes. by the way, which, which uh, indicates the difference between a new and an old crater. Uh, this is a, uh, a crater. Uh, which is about 3,000 feet in diameter, if the camera can get it. And uh, it's a fairly uh, new crater. Uh, an expert like Gene Shoemaker would have to tell us exactly how old it is. But if uh, the resolution of the, of the uh, video system permits, you will see big blocks of rock scattered around its edges, which have been thrown out in the presumed impact of a great meteorite that formed it. This is a crater about the size of the Arizona meteorite crater. Here is a crater uh, that is rather uh, old and worn in the sense that uh, the edges are well rounded. Uh, there is some mechanism that moves material around and works over the soil the way earthworms do on the, on the earth. In earthworms on the moon, it's believed that the bombardment of small meteorites pulverizes the surface layer down to some 10 or 20 feet, perhaps. And you can see how rounded the edges of this crater are. It's relatively old for its size. But on the same picture, one sees some small craters whose edges are very sharply defined. They have not been worked over. They are quite recent. Uh, they have not been pulverized by the surface bombardment of the moon. There's a difference between new and old craters. Would not that bombardment uh, of the entire surface of the moon by meteorites and micrometeorites uh, tend to threaten the astronauts when they're on the surface of the moon? Most of the bombardment is in the form of extremely small particles, perhaps a few millionths of an inch in diameter. They come in at such high speeds that each one is like a, uh, a charge of dy dynamite. It drills into the surface to a very narrow depth and pulverizes a, a little bit of material, they would not get through the uh, space suit. The probability of a meteorite uh, puncturing that suit is very small. Such large meteorites are very infrequent. It's one of the lesser dangers, I believe, uh, in this pioneering step. Dr. Jester, if I might just widen the focus of our, of our discussion for a moment. Uh, you answered a question as to why we're looking uh, into the moon for information, that is, because we want information about the origin of this planet and uh, perhaps the other planets in our solar system. But why, again, do we need such information in this fast-paced uh, life we lead these days? I think that there are two uh, answers to this question. The uh the lunar landing is not an end in itself. It was a means uh, developed uh, under President Kennedy originally okay. for achieving a manned flight capability that the security of the country required at the time, and which has since turned out to have scientific and commercial and financial applications. That's the main thrust, the manned flight capability with the lunar landing as a means of getting us to that end. Uh, there is a long range aspect to the lunar landing in which it plays its own role. Uh, the human species has been on this earth a few hundred thousand years, and it comes at the end of a history of life that stretches back to the first billion years of the earth's history. We have another four or five billion years to go on this planet before the sun becomes a red giant and vaporizes us. Uh, long before then, we will have ventured out beyond the solar system, if we survive, and uh, begun to explore other Earth-like planets, uh, of which there is evidence that there are a great number, perhaps billions, in our galaxy. Mankind is on a watershed. It, we are crossing 
into a, 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 a region of our, hit, of our uh, development in which we can move off the face of our planet for the first time. And the trip to the moon today marks the crossing of that watershed. Uh, it is a uh, step whose long-term significance must be judged in the scale of hundreds of thousands, perhaps of millions of years. It will be written very large in the history books, I think, much larger even than the politics of 1968 and the problems of the cities. Walter? Thank you. We haven't heard uh, anything uh, from the spacecraft of significance uh, while you gentlemen have been giving us that most interesting rundown. Thank you, Dr. Chastro, about that moon of ours. And I think that it is now our moon more than it has ever been before thanks to this feat of uh, the Apollo 8. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8 will continue in a moment. Back here at uh, CBS News Space Center, where we've been reporting this morning the mission of Apollo 8, this uh, dramatic, historic flight of a spacecraft from Earth around the moon. And we've just been listening to Paul Haney at Mission Control, who's back on duty there now with his uh, team at Mission Control as the mission communicator uh, to the public, telling us about uh, the origins of some of the names that we were commenting on earlier uh, that the spacemen have given to sites on the moon. He was explaining, as uh, we had uh, explained uh, a little earlier, thanks to some help from Dr. Eugene Shoemaker, uh, that uh, the astronauts have given names to places which were only identified by number before to simply personalize and make easier a little bit uh, the identification as they fly around. These places are not officially named yet and will not be uh, perhaps until the next meeting of the uh, Astronomical International Astronomical Union, uh, which comes, as Dr. Shoemaker told us, in two and a half years from now. But they've named uh, some of these places after themselves, which Haney explains as justifiable pride, and I don't think anybody would begrudge them that. They've also named a few after uh, some of the people on the ground who have been helpful to them. And, uh, and uh, Jim Lovell had said earlier, before he ever took off, that he had a particular peak in mind that he was going to name Marilyn uh, Peak, or uh, Mount Marilyn, after his wife. So this is why these uh, places are being uh, so named, and uh, we will hear more about that certainly in this next eight revolutions of the moon, the eight revolutions which are left of the ten planned revolutions. They're on the second revolution now, the second pass across the face of the moon. As we look at the moon, they'll be going around on the uh, far side of the moon again uh, in about 35 minutes from now, the loss of signal uh, from Earth to the moon and uh, from the spacecraft to back to us uh, will come at that time, 8.55. They'll be back behind the moon for about 35 minutes on that particular pass. And during that pass, they will fire their spacecraft engine for the second time on the far side of the moon, this time to bring them into a perfect circular orbit of the moon about 70 miles above the moon. They are now in a elliptical or a uh, egg-shaped orbit of the moon with the 190 miles above the moon's surface, the low point around that 70 mile mark. We've had remarkable television pictures and the next uh, television transmission is expected uh, tonight, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's Eastern Standard Earth Time, we now have to refer to, I suppose. Uh, and that will be our uh, next and our only other TV transmission expected from the moon, unless they suddenly decide to do another. However, they're very busy up there, these astronauts. They're not uh, simply loafing as they go around the moon. They've got thousands or hundreds at any rate of uh, still pictures to take and a couple of thousand feet of movie film to make of these landmark spots around the moon that are going to be needed before man goes to the moon to set foot for the first time, which may come as early as next summer. The Apollo 8 crew will make two major contributions to that overall lunar landing program. They have proved now that American astronauts can get to the moon, and they'll bring back our most detailed information about what the moon looks like close up. 